Have you ever wanted a DPS? Have you ever wanted to destroy your enemies with fire, control their minds, shoot an arrow into the fray, or stab them in the back? Well, wait no longer. Because today is the day you learn to DPS. What is DPS? DPS stands for damage per second. This means you are one-fourth of a successful group. Your role is to reduce the hit points of the target, but also do mechanics. This will require you to not only assist through the tank, but switch targets when needed. Besides doing damage and mechanics, DPS is required to manage their hate, move around the battlefield, and take advantage of opportunities or evade certain attacks. There are many different kinds of mages and scouts. First, we have the Wizard, Warlock, Inquisitor, Coercer, Conjurer, and Necromancer. Next, we have the Swashbuckler, Brigand, Troubadour, Beast Lord, Dirge, Ranger, and Assassin. To be DPS, your skills have to be maxed out, your macros have to be perfect with no lag time, and your AAs have to be flawless. You have to do as much damage as possible every second. Wait, what? While doing a lot of damage is a good focus, the most important thing you want to do as a DPS is do mechanics correctly and focus on teamwork. Sometimes you don't want to do damage in a fight because it can be reflected back at your team. The biggest focus you're going to have as a DPS in a group is to moderate your hate. This will keep you from pulling aggro from the tank and making more work for your healer. Also, it will allow you to do a clean rotation without any interruptions. To do this, you can use hate drops like the one shown here, you can use incremental hate removals, and until cancelled, hate dropping abilities. With all three of these tactics combined, you can moderate the amount of hate you produce and it will increase the overall effectiveness of your group. Many times you want to know the fight before you go in. To do this effectively, you'll need some outside help. One way you can do this is to consult EQ2Wiki or EQ2Zam. A great place to look is my other video on this topic. Please check the card at the top right of the screen for a link. One trick you can use to modify hate is to use the toggle threat window command. Once you type this in, a small window will appear on your screen that will tell you how much hate you have. Some abilities scale as you level up. You don't have to upgrade them, they just get stronger as you gain levels. One notable exception to this is balanced synergy that you get for being a member. Abilities come in different levels. You have Apprentice, Journeyman, Adept, Expert, Master, Grandmaster, Ancient, and Celestial. Journeyman and Expert can be crafted, and as of Reign of Shadows, Adept can be crafted as well. The trade skiller that handles scout abilities is the Jeweler. Jewelers are the only ones that can create Journeyman and Expert level spells, and more recently, Adept spells. To make your recipe book only show scout spells, click edit and go down to rune crafting and then hit ok. For casters, the trade skill of choice is sage. Sage can make all of the same kinds of skills that jewelers can just for casters. All of these abilities can be upgraded over time by use of the upgrade tab. 
Ascension abilities came about in Kunark Ascending. Ascension abilities are extra abilities that any class can get that have many different uses depending on the class you take. You can learn more about Ascension abilities by watching my video on the card above. Some other abilities that you will have are the Epic 2.0 abilities. These will sometimes fundamentally change the way classes work. These abilities appeared in Chaos Descending and have stayed in the meta thus far. Macros can be used for just about everything. To create a macro, hit O on your keyboard, go to the Macros tab, and then create a new macro in an empty slot. You'll want to title your macro and pick a picture. You can add commands or abilities up to 24 per macro. A great way to test out your macro is to go to the guild hall, select a training dummy, and set it to immortal. Then you can complete a full macro barrage, making sure that every skill to the very bottom casts. Macros should only be used with DPS or tank classes. Healers don't really benefit from macros, and nothing really beats hitting the keys yourself. If you don't want to build your own AA spec through trial and error, you can go to EQ2 Wire Character in your favorite search engine. Once you get to the site, you're going to want to pick which adventure class you want. Then you want to pick the adventure level that's max at the time. Then you want to pick the earned AAs, 350, and pick the potency, 325,000 is good right now. 5200 Resolve should give you a good search. Then click search. After you get the list, go name by name and check the stats. You'll want to scroll down all the way to their max damage. For mages, you want to look for max magic hit. For melee DPS, you want to look for max melee hit. This max damage doesn't mean everything, but it will give you a good idea of what a master at the helm looks like. After that, go ahead and hit the AA tab and copy down their AAs. first stat we'll talk about is health. Health is important regardless of the class you play. Certain bosses do constant damage and you'll need health to survive that. Power is important for all classes. You'll find yourself drained of power a lot in the current expansion, so power feed is an important part of the group. The main attributes are strength, agility, stamina, intelligence, and wisdom. As a DPS, you're going to be focusing on agility or intelligence depending on whether you're a scout or a mage. Stamina is important for all classes. Elemental defenses, while important, will usually be given by your gear on this expansion. Mitigation is important for all classes, but less so for casters and mildly important for scouts. Avoidance is your ability to avoid being hit completely or return damage when you do. Uncontested abilities allow you to avoid a strike to attack. Block is your ability to completely block an attack. Crit Chance is your ability to make a critical hit. Anything over 100 will give you a harder critical. Once you have achieved your bonus crit, Crit Bonus will make you hit harder. This will work on melee, spells, heals, and taunts. Crit Bonus is the second most important ability in the game. Fervor is the most important ability in the game. After all modifiers have been applied, it will multiply the resulting number by the percentage shown. Resolve is one of those abilities where just enough is all you need. To find the resolve of an enemy, target it and look at its buffs to figure out its resolve number. Having more resolve than you need won't make you do any more damage. Ability Mod will increase the base damage of your abilities up to 50% of their max. Hate Mod is important for DPS because it reduces the amount of hate your abilities generate. Reuse Speed is at its best at 100%. Anything over 100% is wasted. Casting Speed is another ability you want to keep as close to 100% as you can get it. Recovery Speed is how fast you can recover from casting a spell before you can cast the next one. Spell Reuse Speed and Spell Double Cast are no longer used in the game. They are instead governed by Ability Double Cast. Ability Double Cast should be as close to 200% as you can get it. 
And now we'll look at auto attack multipliers. Auto attack multipliers are important for all classes, including mages. DPS is a straight percentage upgrade to your melee damage. Haste says how fast you'll attack and also works on abilities. Multi attack is like ability double cast for your melee attacks. AE auto attack works in a 45 degree fan in front of you and hits all enemies. Strike through is your ability to strike through a successful block by an enemy with a melee attack. Accuracy is your chance to hit. It can be modified by a head adornment and a cloak adornment. Flurry works like fervor for your melee auto attack. It gives you the percentage shown chance to hit a single monster by 100 to 500 percent. This also works with AE auto attack. Weapon damage bonus adds the percentage shown to a successful strike of your weapon. If an ability is blue, then it's maxed, and you'll need to get overcap to increase it. The damage of your weapon is what all auto attack multipliers are based on. Also, as a caster, you won't want to forget about your ranged attack. Casting your ranged attack in the proper timing will increase your DPS significantly. To make this a default, you'll want to go into Options, go down to Auto Attack Mode, and go to Force Ranged Spell. Food and drink play a special part this expansion and can give you many different upgrades depending on the kind you use. When it comes to gear, resolve isn't everything. You want to get pieces that are going to complement each other and fill out those stats that we talked about earlier. All of these pieces should fit together like a puzzle, each bringing their own properties to make a greater whole. So when you're building your pieces out, don't focus on one thing too much. Get pieces that are going to synergize to create a greater whole. For the end game of Reign of Shadows, blue adorns are the best thing you can get. These increase your fervor. While there is a 25 fervor rune in the free box and Fortal Mist, these are the best ones you're going to be able to get. They include Embers of War, Fires of Mystery, and Reignited Insight. These will increase your fervor a large percentage and some of your other skills as well. To get these adornments, it is very difficult. You need to complete the fabled Kale Drakel. Solo Sec Row, and Plane of War. While those raids are difficult, there are other options. You can purchase these lesser adornments from Jenna Billow Mix in the library of Marist. These require the Archivist Solidus coins. To get these, talk to the Planar Chronicler Volume 2 and do the raid level quests. There are Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, all with increasing difficulty. Thank you for watching this DPS guide. If you would like to support the channel, please like and subscribe or share with someone who you think would like the video. Also, if you'd like to support the channel monetarily, links will be in the description. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and follow if you enjoy the content. To get notifications when I post a new video or go live, please turn on notifications for YouTube.